study we did was about um, the progression of ALS because actually the progression rate could be quite variable among patients, but uh, it is really poorly doc documented whether progression could even pose. Uh, there is uh, one study, one previous study, which uh, says that this uh, using clinical trial data, these poses or plateaus uh, could be are not that rare. But clinical trial data are not representative of the, of the general population. Therefore, we applied these. We, we, we tried to estimate this, um, this, uh, the frequency of these plateaus in a real-life cohort. So we used our register, the Piemonte and Valle d'Aosta register. Uh, we selected the patients uh, between 2007 and 2014. And actually, we looked at their consecutive ALS-FRS uh, measurement and looking for a stationarity of this measurement lasting at least 6, uh, 12 or 18 months. And actually, we, uh, we've seen that, for example, a patient, one out of six patients had at least one plateau lasting at least, at least uh, um, six months. So these plateaus are not rare and, and, and it could be even longer, but in a smaller group of patients, for example, could, could last even one year in, in the 8% of patients. And patients with a spinal onset or with a predominant upper motor neuron phenotype at diagnosis or younger at diagnosis have a, a higher probability of developing such plateaus. So uh, the conclusion we made is that plateaus are not that rare and should not necessarily, as it, it is likely in clinical practice, lead the neurologist to seek for alternative diagnosis. And on the other end, they should be, they could be included in the design of clinical trial because now uh, we know that uh, patients' progression could pose even independently from the effect of a putative experimental drug.